guys talk about the things that I took out on the trail. Um, if you didn't watch my first gear video and then the following update video, you might want to watch those first, but I'm going to take everything out of my pack so you can see how I packed it and talk about some of the things that worked well for me, some of the things that didn't, some of the things I want to change. As most of you know, when I got out there, I experienced a lot of knee trouble and I came home, I had to rest my knee because I was unable to walk on it. And then I went back out there. I had reduced the pack weight some then, um, but it wasn't enough with my knees still weren't fully healed. Um, so now my goal, as I mentioned in a previous video, is to for, get my pack weight down further and to build my muscle strength up in my legs so that I'm better prepared for a through hike, which um, I'm going to attempt next year. And this year I'm going to do some section hikes to also prepare for that. Um, so I want to start going over my pack with you. Um, on the outside of my pack I have the ZC. Uh, this was really handy. Is it necessary? Not really. Does it weigh much? No. But uh, whether I keep it or not, I don't know, but it that was very handy. Um, I had my Crocs, which again, convenient at the camps. Uh, they're not necessarily good for water fording. I didn't have to do any water fording during the short time I was out there. Um, these are something that I will probably not carry and try to find something lighter and something that way is better for river fording. Uh, I use this to soak my lunches in and I really liked being able to do that. It actually worked out really well. Um, so I'm probably going to keep that. Of course, I carried the smart water bottles. These are the one liter bottles, but most of the time I only fill them up about halfway. If, and sometimes not even that. The, the water there in the south portion of the trail was plentiful. Um, so I really just filled up at the source and carried only as much water as I needed. And then inside the mesh compartment on my pack, I carried the extra bladder, which um, I found this really handy to have. Um, what I would do basically is if I knew I was getting close to camp, I would fill it up so that that way I didn't necessarily have to worry about whether or not the water source was going to be good at camp or if it was going to be a long walk downhill when my knees were hurting me. The last thing I wanted was to have to walk down a steep hill to get water. So when the water source was convenient, I went ahead and filled it up and that way I had water for meals. Um, so that was handy. I, that's basically just held my dirty water. My rain jacket. My rain pants. Also in these side pockets, I had my Sawyer Mini, which I kept in this little bag because it held everything together. I carried a little bag that I used for scooping water. I didn't really need it. All the sources that I came across were, were flowing well enough that I didn't need it, but it was nice to know I had it in case I did come across something that was very shallow and that I would need to just scoop the water up like like by putting this right up against the flow and then I could just pour it into the bladder that way. And I kept the straw and the mini. For my spoon, I used the long handled titanium spoon. 
Thanksgiving, and I just kept a little Lexan butter knife for spreading things like peanut butter and hummus on the tortillas, things like that. Um, something I found really handy that I use often, a um, little can opener. Uh, but what, that's not what I was used often, that was handy. I didn't use that at all, actually. Um, was the scissors. Uh, I was constantly using these. I never used my knife, not once, but I use these almost every single day for opening packages, cutting strings, all kinds of things. So uh, these are de a definite to take. I may not even bother with taking the knife. I just take those. The freshette, which is a device that allows women to stand while they're peeing. Uh, I found this really handy. Uh, I know a lot of women don't like them. They say they they are difficult to get used to using. I didn't find that to be the case. Um, what it did was it allowed me, if I had to go and I was on a, a part of the trail where there was a steep climb up and a steep climb down and I had to go, I didn't have to go very far off trail and I could just quickly, without taking my pack off or anything, do what I needed to do and keep going. So I love that. And then also uh, at night when you're in your tent, it's really nice to be able to just go in a bottle, especially if you're in a crowded area and you know that the only place you're going to be able to go privately is to walk a ways, quite a ways from your tent. So you can just go in a bottle and discard it in the morning and that was very handy. Then I also carried a whistle, which is strapped to the front, and a bandana. And in my pocket, uh, mostly all I carried in the pockets were snacks. I had my pocket knife, which I didn't really need, like I said. Uh, a, a back for the camera in case it rains. And then just my snacks right there. In the uh, lid compartment of my pack, I carried my maps. Just, they were pages from the AWOL guide. And then also in here, I kept my journal pages and some contact information, that sort of thing. I never did go out and buy a compactor bag liner, and I just ended up using a hefty, a hefty uh, yard waste bag, and it worked fine for the short time I was out there. It would have been easy to replace, and it's a little lighter weight, so that turned out fine. Uh, I had fleece pants. Uh, actually, when I started, in uh, Amaclo uh, at Springer Mountain. When I was at Amakaloa, we weighed the pack. It was 27 and a half pounds. And I was wearing both the fleece pants and this puff jacket. But um, then the, there were other, I don't have them here now, but then the clothes I was wearing that day in addition to those, um, I pretty much wore the whole time I was out there. Um, This is the Thermoval puff jacket. If you watched my earlier videos, then you probably saw it. And uh, this was just polyester fleece and uh, very warm and comfortable. Okay, my tent poles went down the side and my states. Uh, the Thermolite Reactor Plus was my liner, um, and that was part of my sleep system. system. Oh, no. It worked really well for me. Um, I used the Catalyst, GSI Catalyst, which is the one I start, started 
day one with. Um, and I use the pocket rockets, so um, I did change the wind guard. I had I've changed it several times. Uh, first, I had a heavy aluminum wind guard, and I switched that, and then I went to a reflectix wind guard, and didn't really even use it. Um, just didn't have a need for it when I was out there, but because it took up so much room in my pack, we made this one out of like a pie, it was out of like a roasting, aluminum roasting pan, and it's like a thicker aluminum, so it works well for, for um, being able to stand it up and yet fold it. But again, I haven't had the chance to really use it either. Um, originally, I took the large canister of fuel, and found I really don't need the large canister. I don't go through that much fuel. Um, and I think part of the reason is because I was using the pocket rocket and with this pan being just a little wider base on it, um, I was able to come to a boil in like two and a half minutes, which I only had, I only did that with maybe one meal. Most of the meals, I only had to bring it to like a simmer. And so like within two minutes, my meal was, my, my water was done. Some of the soups I made, I just put right in there and they came to a simmer and then I ate right out of the pan. So it worked out really well. Um, the, whole, the whole cook system uh, can, comes to let's see, around 20 ounces, I think it was. Um, that's a lot. If this is an area that if I'm going ultra light, I think I'm gonna end up going to a no cook meal prep so that I don't have to carry any of this. But it is a nice set. I really like the way it all worked out for me. So. But I also like having a lighter pack too. My food bag doesn't have anything in it right now. I carried the op sacks in here. Um, the one problem that I had with was with the op sacks. Um, let me show you. They work great for holding in the odor because when I would open them up, boy, the smell of the food would just come right at me. But otherwise, I couldn't smell it. But the zippers. They had reinforced recently the zippers on these bags, and they work, they are very strong, so strong that the plastic was tearing away from the top of the zipper while the zipper was staying closed as I was trying to pull it apart. Um, so I ended up reinforcing it before I went back out there this last time with some duct tape, and that seems to work really well. Maybe sometime I'll do like a short tutorial on how I did it. It's real simple. But uh, that's one one issue I had when I was out there was that tearing away. And once that plastic tore away, it was really, really hard to open them. I had to actually use the plastic little knife that I had and, and pry it open. So just be aware of that if you get them, you might want to reinforce them before you take them out. basically had my sleep clothes in it, which was a uh, long sleeve fleece shirt, uh, fleece, leggings, an extra pair of socks, extra pair of uh, underwear, um, and a bean. Uh, and it also, I had carried a town shirt, which I got rid of when I went back out there. I don't need that. Um, I think that's all that was in here. Oh, and I had also a, a, another pair of socks in here. And I kept them in the Ziploc so I could keep them separate because I found that what was happening was this Velcro was catching on the fabric that's on the, the bag here. Um, 
something I might want to change in the future so I don't have to do that. Um, and then my my polar buff, and my, oh, and my gloves are in here. Um, my gloves, most of the time, I kept in a pocket in, in the front of the pack. Uh, I didn't really use them that often. I'm sure that um, I probably would have used them more if the weather had stayed cold. My electronics bag, nothing changed there. So it was the same as when I started out uh, at Springer Mountain. Um, everything worked out good there. I did find that my phone battery does not hold nearly as good a charge in the cold weather. Um, so I was really glad to have the anchor, which um, came in. That, that was, it's well worth the extra weight. My sleeping bag. As most of you know, I struggled finding a, a bag. I, because I'm big and I didn't want a wool bag, I mean a uh, down bag. And so I was looking for a synthetic bag that would be warm enough and compressed small enough. So I ended up getting a 20 degree bag that was a child size bag by Kelty. Um, it kept me warm. I did use the liner with it. Now, I don't think it would have kept me warm at 20, but um, I'd say the temperatures, there were a couple nights there where the temperatures were probably in the upper 20s, low 30s, and I had the liner, which is the Thermalite Fabric Reactor Plus, and Without the liner, I would have been cold, but it kept kept me fairly warm. When it got up to around 35 or so, I actually got a little warm with the liner and actually found myself trying to push the liner off of me. Um, so, you know, I recommend this for kids. Um, if you're a parent and you're looking for a bag for your kid, don't send them out in 20 degree weather with it, but, you know, it's, it's a decent bag. I liked it. Um, as for, for someone my size, it was a little, it was a little snug, you know, I found myself feeling a little cramped in it, but, um, otherwise it's a good bag. However, it's three pounds. And so I made some changes the last time I went out and I'll show you what those were. different sleeping bag and a different liner. And you can see the, the difference between that system and this system. <laughs> so these two here, the sleeping bag and liner was 57.9 ounces. For these two here, it's 45.82 ounces. So I saved 11 and a half ounces uh, just by making that change. Now this bag is the uh, Hyper Lamina Spark uh, 35, which it, it says 32 on there. That Now that's the men's comfort rating. And when they say women sleep a little colder and to expect um, something more close to 40, so I was concerned and that's why I went ahead and I got this liner which is the Thermalite Reactor Fleece Liner. And it's supposed to give, it's supposed to add a whole nother season to your bag. Um, whether it does that or not, I don't know because I haven't had a chance yet to really test this in the cold weather because I don't, when I got back out there, as y'all know if you watch my other video, uh, I was only out there a day. So I didn't get a chance to test these yet. To, so in some of these future hikes that I'm gonna be doing, I will do a review on this, this setup 
um, which I'm hoping will work out well. Also, as part of my sleep system, let me get to it. <laughs> In the bottom of my bag, I carried my Thermarest Neo Air X Lite pad, um, which is, let's see what's the weight on that. 7.44 is what it weighs at on my scale. Um, now, this is the small, which is really almost like just a torso length pad. Um, I have to say, I wish I had gotten the regular. It would have been a little bit more weight, though. Um, I found I kept slight, kind of sliding off this, and because I'm a stomach sleeper, it seemed to put my knees in a weird position, and I, I just, it never felt comfortable. And so, <laughs> you know, I think if I had been, if I were a side sleeper, it would have been fine. I think it would have been really comfortable. As far as insulation goes, it was awesome. I never felt any kind of cold coming up from the ground. And, you know, it was always comfortable, you know, you know, in terms of padding. So I like this a lot with the, that with that exception. So the regular would have been better, but for now, I'm gonna hang on to this because it is lighter weight and see if I can get used to it. If not, I may end up switching. So. For my tent, well, I have the Tyvek that I used as a footprint. It's dirty right now, but that worked out fine. That worked out well. Um, I love my tent. Um, some of, let's see, I want to tell you guys what it weighs. Uh, the tent itself weighs 29.10. This is on my scale. and then the poles and stakes together came to 9.24 ounces. Um, that's a fairly lightweight tent, but I can get lighter. Uh, it's gonna hurt me to change tents, and I may still do that, but this tent functions so well. It's easy to set up. It utilizes the trekking poles when you're setting it up, which I think is one of the great reasons it is lighter. Um, the poles, you don't have that extra weight of a lot of extra poles, even though it had the little poles that went at the back of it. Um, it held up to the wind. There was one night there that was super windy. I had done some wind tests here, and I may have video of that. If I do, we'll insert it somewhere in here. But I had done some wind tests, and the wind was 28 mile per hour sustained winds and with higher gusts. And when I was out there one night in the tent, it was much stronger than that. So I don't know what the, the wind got up to, but the thing was whipping back and forth, but never winning where it held up. We only got, we got a couple hours of a light rain one night, um, and I stayed dry, no, no problems there. Um, here we had some heavy rain when I tested it and no problems so I had had to seal it myself because it it does have the um, silicone uh, I'm not sure how you say that but it, it doesn't have the polyurethane coating but the silicone coating on it so I had to seal it myself it didn't come factory seam sealed um, so I must have did an okay job because it worked out sometime I'll give you a closer tour of this tent you can see it in my video set up, but um, it's a nice tent. I really recommend it. My pack came with a rain cover, and the rain cover worked well. Um, then in my lid portion of the pack is where I kept, well, I carried, first of all, I just now saw this, so I'm going that. I carried some hand sanitizer, which, I think the hand sanitizer is important because, well, even when I was out there, there was talk about how the norovirus was already um, showing up in North Carolina. Um, so I think it's important to wash your hands often when you're um, using the privies or at hospitals and that sort of thing. 
Um, but in the lid is where I kept all my sort of miscellaneous items, toiletry items. I had <laughs> the scoop and uh, I weighed this stuff. I had cut, before I went back out there, I cut this down by about half the weight. Um, so what you're seeing here is pretty much about half of what I had originally. Um, I'm not gonna go through every little bit of what I have here, but I do think I can get it down further because I weighed all this and it's about a pound still. Um, so full of paper, um, vitamins and any kind of just in case Medi medicine type stuff, but I just don't think I need to carry it. Um, the toiletry items, most of that I do need to carry, but I don't need to carry a whole bottle of Dr. Bronner's soap. Um, the, pan the pack towel, that came in really handy. Um, I use that mostly to wipe down the condensation in my tent before I folded it up. Um, and then I just hung it on the back of my pack to dry, and it dr dried super quick. So, um, and I also used it uh, one time when I got to uh, a sh where I, I took a shower and didn't have a towel. I used the pack towel. Worked fine. Worked great. Um, so, I'm going to be going through that, trying to reduce it even more. You know, it's a learning process. I just keep whittling away at it. Um, my tent holes and stakes. <laughs> uh, talk about some of the other things that uh, I found. Oh, my, with my food when I was out there, um, like the coconut milk powder. One thing I came to realize is that even though here, it dissolves super easy in water. In those really cold temperatures out there, <laughs> I ended up with chunky coconut milk in my cereal. And I didn't mind, it didn't taste, taste, change the flavor at all. So I, that was fine with me. But I just wanna let you guys know if you decide you wanna take coconut powder, that if it's really cold, the oils that are in the coconut powder may stay, <laughs> may stay in solid clumps for you. Um, let's see what else. Oh, and the uh, the freeze dried foods. A uh, lot of lot of the food came in packages that I was able to divide into several portions. So we divided them and then vacuum sealed them. And I thought that would be good enough. But what happened was, I don't know if it's condensation or what, but somehow the 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 moisture did get in, and they became kind of chewy. Uh, they still tasted fine, but for the future, I will use moisture absorbers inside those packages. So, and I think that should just solve that problem. The big change that I want to make. First of all, most of you probably saw where I had changed packs from my original pack was uh, a, a Osprey Kite 46, which was actually in size small, 44 liter. And I changed it because it didn't really fit, all my stuff didn't really fit in it. So then I got this, which is the Osprey Ace 50. Um, I love this pack. It's a kid's pack, but it has all the same quality and features as the adult packs. Um, the thing I don't like about it is it weighs three pounds, just like I think the original pack was, I think it might have been 3.2 pounds for the kelp, for the uh, Osprey Kite. And then this one was right at three pounds, I think. That's way too heavy a pack for a through hike. Um, what happened was I was looking for an ultralight pack that fits a 13 inch torso, and I could not find them in adult packs. Um, that could carry all my gear. And I came across Gossamer gear packs, um, but I was concerned they, they might not fit and I was already running out of time and to be able to return it if it didn't. And so I stuck with, the, stuck with this. And um, now that I have more time, I did go ahead and I got the Gossamer gear Gorilla. Um, 
I haven't had a chance to test it yet. It just came in. I did try it on. It uh, seems to fit. Uh, my next video, or maybe not the next one, but as soon as I can, I will uh, do a review of the pack, let you know how it worked out on a first height. As you can see, it's a pretty small pack, which is going to force me to be more to be at ultra light, um, and that's my goal. Uh, I believe that I can probably get my pack weight down to a base weight of 12 pounds, just from the punching like the numbers that I have here and and figuring out what I think I'm willing to do without. I think I can get a base weight of 12 pounds, and that's. That's changing the tent. So I'm still looking into that. And uh, I may go with the Z-Pack Soulflex. Um, I'm still considering it. Um, and then I shouldn't have to carry more than about six pounds of consumables most of the time. I mean, to start with. And then of course, you know, that would be just the first day after a resupply. So that's considerably lighter than what I had started out with at Springer. So as you can see, I'm working on it and I'm, I'm gonna get this pack weight down. I'm gonna get my legs in shape and I'm gonna get out there and I'm gonna try again. So, <sighs> wish me luck.